like plastic and plastic of injection. It is not disposable of the waste stream. In fact, it is done to make well capable of production in order to efficiently withdraw in commercial quantities product from the rock, including the water that was used during the frack job. There have been anti oil and gas organizations that have attempted to construct an argument that fracturing is the same thing as a class 2 injection but produced waters and should be re regulated as such under the Safe Drinking Water Act. That argument is an attempt to fit a square peg in a round hole and it fails by virtue of the various definitions of the processes being discussed. Congress never had the intention of regulating the well stimulation process under the Safe Drinking Water Act as a waste disposal process. In 2005, Congress clar clarified that view by simply stating in the 2005 Energy Policy Act that hydraulic fracturing, or storage gas injection for that matter, is not underground injection. Congress did not exempt the industry from the Safe Drinking Water Act, as others claim. In fact, industries produce water waste streams are specifically regulated as class two injection and fully covered under Safe Drinking, Drinking Water Act. There is no loophole. The language is definitional and straightforward. Nowhere does it say that the oil and gas industry and its activities that are relevant to the act are exempted from Safe Drinking Water Act regulation. Some people are making allegations that radioactive waste are being injected into the ground. The radioactive waste reference are not what it would lead you to believe. Norm or naturally occurring radioactive material is part of everyday life. It even occurs in our bodies with radioactive potassium. You can find it in public drinking water, Brazil nuts, peanut butter, or the air. If you have a granite kitchen tabletop, you have a norm issue. On average, Americans receive a radiation dose of about 0.62 grams each year. But if you're unfortunate enough to have dentures, they can add another 1,600 milligram to a person's exposure level. None of these levels are dangerous to human health. The radiological survey report by the Co-Physics Corporation in New York recently concluded the rock cuttings from the gas drilling operations that sampled during this project have radionuclide levels that do not pose any environmental health problem, even if they were deposited in areas accessible to the general public. Therefore, they are certainly acceptable for landfill disposal. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Study titled Supplemental Generic Environmental Impact Statement on the Oil and Gas and Solution Mining Regulatory Program that was completed in September of last year stated that based upon current available information, it is anticipated that flowback water would not contain levels of norm of significance. The Ohio Department of Health has actually tested these waters and cuttings to determine if the levels of norm are dangerous to human health. All the produced water and cuttings tested fell below levels harmful to human health. There is no concern in regards to radiation from the scope of produced waters and cuttings. Much concern has been voiced regarding the volume of produced waters from other states that's being injected into high UIC, UIC wells. And in fact, the volume from such sources is notably increasing. First, let me say that the OGA is first in line expressing concerns that out-of-state drying volumes may stress the capacity of UIC wells to manage the produced waters from existing North Ohio oil and gas wells. We believe that other states should work to develop solutions within their own states to manage issues related to their own industries. Ohio, just like other states, must accept produced water from other states because of the Dormant Commerce Clause, which is part of the Interstate Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution. The Dormant Commerce Clause prohibits the state from passing legislation that improperly burdens or discriminates against interstate commerce. The best example of the Dormant Commerce Clause goes back to Philadelphia versus New Jersey, New Jersey, in which the Supreme Court ordered New Jersey to accept waste, liquid or solid, from other states. This is not a state issue. We are federally obligated to accept waste from other states, be it solid waste like trash or liquid waste like produced water. The operation of oil and natural gas wells has been regulated since the 1920s with an increasing emphasis on environmental controls since the 1960s. This regulation has been and continues to be done effectively by the states, a reality that has been recognized by the Congress and by the EPA. Because of the diversity of conditions associated with oil and natural gas production, the regulatory process must be flexible and reflect the unique conditions in the state or area within the state. It requires a technical expertise that is not something that has been developed in each state 
which does not exist within the EPA. For this reason, federal law is generally preferred at this stage to the regulation of this industry. The Groundwater Protection Council is an organization of state groundwater regulatory agencies which comes together to mutually work toward the protection of the nation's <coughs> groundwater supply. The purpose of GWDC, GWDC is to promote and ensure the use of best management practices and fair but effective laws regarding comprehensive groundwater protection. In August of 2011, the Groundwater Protection Council issued a report that investigated the regulatory history of Texas and Ohio as it relates to oil and natural gas production and production of, and protection of groundwater resources. The report conclusively demonstrates that the state regulatory agencies within these states but both significant oil and gas producing states have prioritized regulatory reforms and strategically applied resources to improve standards that reduce risk associated with state-specific compliance issues. Over time, both Ohio and Texas have strategically enhanced regulatory standards for state-specific oil and gas EMP activities that have been found to cause groundwater contamination incidents. In other words, the states have made consistent ongoing improvements to protect the environment and the public interest that is tailored to each individual state's characteristics and needs. Also over time, the states have engaged in a process that corroborates the regulatory abilities, identifies regulatory gaps, and provides a process to close those gaps and improve the respective regulatory programs. The State Review of Oil, Natural Gas, and Environmental Regulation is known as stronger than the independent state board of government body that manages the state review process. The overall objective of the state review process is to help state oil and gas regulatory programs improve. The key innovative aspect of the state review process are the teams made up of equal representation from the environmental community, state regulators, and industry come together to conduct an authentic peer review critique of the state's regulatory program, benchmarking the program against a national set of guidelines that itemize the critical elements necessary to protect the public interest in the environment. This process represents a stakeholder-driven collaborative effort working together to develop a regulatory framework at the state level that effectively protects the environment by recognizing unique historic, geologic, and topographic characteristics of oil and gas development among the states. Stronger recently updated the review of guidelines to include a specific section focused on hydraulic fracturing. Over the past year, Stronger has done fact-specific reviews in six states in Ohio following the implementation of the new law, Senate Bill 165. The Stronger conducted state reviews specific to hydraulic fracturing in Ohio. The review concluded that the Ohio program was overall well-managed, professional, and meeting its program objectives. And that report was signed off on by the environmental community. The Secretary of Energy Advisory Board, Shale Gas Production Subcommittee Interim Board, and the recent National Petroleum Report on Shale Gas has specifically commended the state review process. The state review process demonstrates that the states are the best and most efficient point to regulate the industry's waste streams. The process provides for a system of constant improvement and an opportunity to share and promote new or unique regulatory concepts among the states while maintaining the flexibility <coughs> needed to meet individual states' needs. Injection of produced water deep Produce, injection of produced water deep underground into formations that already contain formation water using wells regulated to federal standards has proven to be safe, effective, and a preferred means for protecting the environment. And such act activity interacts with the deep geological anomaly caused the exceedingly rare events we have witnessed recently in Ohio, and regulatory experts need to take action to correct the specific situation. That has happened. Unfortunately, some of the people speaking with the loudest voices right now in opposition to UIC wells appear to be people with the least awareness of the history of facts associated with the UIC program that did exist in Ohio. 